Now we're given that sine of theta minus alpha is identical to sine theta cos alpha minus cos theta sine alpha and asked to show that the sine of 15 degrees then is equal to a quarter of root 6 minus root 2. Now how do we do this? Well we take the sine of 15 degrees, let's just write that in, we'll just write it in here, sine of 15 degrees. Well it's going to be obviously based on this identity, that's what they want us to do. And we've got to write this as the difference between two angles. And those two angles are going to be ones that are well known, have well known trigonometric ratios. And that would be 45 degrees and 30 degrees. If you do the difference between those two angles, you're going to get 15 degrees. I know you could do, say, the sine of 90 degrees minus 75 degrees, okay? That would give the sine of 15, but as for 75 degrees, we don't know much about the sine cosine of them, okay? But we should know the trigonometric ratios for sine and cos of 45 degrees and the sine and cos of 30 degrees. So we can expand this. We can expand it using this identity. Theta is the 45 degrees, alpha is the 30 degrees. So we're going to have sine of theta cos alpha for the first term. So we're going to have sine of 45 degrees then, cosine of 30 degrees. And then it's going to be minus cos theta sine alpha. So that's going to be the cos of 45 degrees times the sine of 30 degrees. Now, as I said earlier, sine of 45, cos of 30, sine, cos of 45 and sine of 30 are all well-known results, you should know. You might have a calculator though that gives you these values, but nonetheless you should know them. I'll just quickly remind you that if you took a 45 degree triangle, something like this, okay, it's not that well drawn here, but it's something like this. If you have a right angle here and these two angles are 45 degrees then it's an isosceles triangle. These two sides are going to be exactly the same length and if we take them to be one unit each then by Pythagoras' theorem this is root 2. Now if you're unfamiliar with this idea just go on my website. I've got tutorials on the trigonometric ratios of 45 degrees and also the one for 30 degrees. That's when you take an equilateral triangle and you cut it down the middle and you get a right angle triangle. Again, something like this. Okay, again, not drawn very accurately, but we would have that this angle would be 60 degrees, this is 30 degrees, and if you took an equilateral triangle having sides of length 2 units, this would be 2 this would be one if you cut it down the middle and by Pythagoras' theorem this is root 3. Okay, learn those triangles and you will then be able to say that the sine of 45 degrees which is opposite over hypotenuse, if we take this 45 degrees opposite is 1, hypotenuse is root 2, so it's 1 over root 2 for the sine of 45 degrees. Cosine of 30 taking 30 degrees up here. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it'll be root 3 over 2. So we've got times root 3 over 2 minus cosine of 45 degrees adjacent over hypotenuse. So there's our 45 degrees, there's our adjacent side, there's our hypotenuse. 1 over root 2 then. 1 over root 2 for that one. Sine of 30 there's our 30 degrees. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so the opposite is 1. Hypotenuse is 2, so we end up with 1 over 2 or a half. Now we just need to tidy this up. For the first term we've got 1 times root 3, which is root 3, over root 2 times 2, which is 2 root 2. Minus 1 times 1 here is 1 over 2 root 2 again. So what have we got here? Well we've got the same 
denominator so we can say that's all over 2 root 2 and then on the top we're going to have root 3 minus 1. Now looking at what we've got to show here you can see that we've got the quarter at the front here we've got no square roots in the denominator so that means we've got to get rid of this root 2 so we can rationalize this by timesing top and bottom of this fraction by root 2 so I'll just slip it in there okay remember multiplying top and bottom by the same thing this is 1 so you're multiplying by 1 effectively it's going to keep the same value but just change the appearance of it and what do we get now well I'll just put equals over here we're going to have root 2 times root 3 and root 2 times 1 so that's going to be root 2 times root 3 which is root 6 and root 2 times the 1 that's going to be minus 1 root 2 or just simply minus root 2 so that's looking pretty encouraging we've got that up here now on the denominator 2 root 2 times root 2 well root 2 times root 2 is 2 and 2 times the remaining 2 then is 4 so we end up with a quarter at the front okay so there you go that's what we had to show